Now these are some basic definitions. What is the data? Known facts that can be recorded and that have some implicit meaning. What is a database? A collection of related data. Mini world, some part of real world about which data is stored in a database. For example, student grades and transcripts in a university. So some kind of a small area, we can call it some kind of a subject area that can be called as, that's called as mini world. What is a DBMS now? DBMS is something that manages the database. So if I have a big database like a file, uh, the systems are there, or if I have the data collected in some, some kind of, you know, um, tables or something, I just need some kind of a software to, to manage all of that data. And that's what is called as DBMS, the database management systems. And what is a database system then? Database system is the whole, uh, you know, set of uh, uh, applications, uh, we can say, the ones which, which are really, let's say, reading the data from that DBMS. And, uh, you know, we are uh, putting the data back in the, through that DBMS. So the set of applications as well as the DBMS that would be called as a database system. Now here's some, uh, you know, a brief about uh, the file system versus DBMS. Uh, before that, I think I, uh, I, I would like to really tell you more about uh, the need to, uh, for the, why we really need a data model. Let me see if I have that slide here. Yes, that's where it is. So, uh, well, basically, before we jump to the DBMS, it is good to understand more about the data model. What happens, uh, uh, you know, when we try to store the data in the database in form of files, in form of uh, any, you know, unstructured raw form, which, uh, which does not have a particular uh, structure, we are not able to relate a particular set of data to the other set of data. Okay, something we can think of like, you know, uh, like a barren piece of land where we want to really make some kind of a structure, a building or a home or something. We really have to, first of all, make a map. We have to uh, design, make some high level uh, design where we say, okay, here's going to be my room. Here's going to be my um, the living room. Here's going to be my kitchen, the toilets or whatever. So why we do that? Because we want to really use that particular area, that particular room for a specific purpose. We just can't make, you know, the whole piece of land we can't use for the, uh, for everything. So we divide it. And now this kind of, and how that helps then, because uh, we place certain things in that particular area. We live, uh, you know, uh, a little, uh, we do different activities in that area, let's say. So if we, are, if we make a kitchen, we are going to really do the cooking there, of course. Uh, same is the case for the bedroom and the, we do whatever different activities as for the need. So same is the case for a data model when we try to make a, uh, you know, when we try to store the data in the database, we try to give it a structure that this is how I would like to store my data. So we divide the data into different sets of rooms. Okay, those are sometimes now if we go back in the data modeling world, we can call them as an entity or if we are really talking about a DBMS, they will be called as a table or something, or some kind of an object where we are storing the data. And then those objects are going to interact with each other. Just like the doorways are there in your home or your building, you have a doorway to go from one room to the other. Here you have the other objects in form of constraints, the foreign keys, or you have then the languages uh, like SQL, PL, SQL to interact between those objects. Go from one object to the other to find out what data it is. Okay. So this is a very basic need of data modeling. If we now... Uh, just go through some of the theoretical concepts here. It's a graphical representation of complex real world data structures. And it facilitates interaction among the designer, the application programmer and the end user. 
So who all are all these uh, parties? The designer basically is the one who is a data modeler himself, the one who is going to design the database by gathering the requirements and translating them into form of an entity relationship diagram. And the application programmer, he is the one who is going to use the database, the design that has been made by the designer. He, the application programmer, writes the code behind that application pro, uh, 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 for that particular set of tables or the design and makes an application. And finally, there is the end user. So here, uh, the end user would be the end user of the application or, you know, if we are talking about a company, we, we are actually talking more about the uh, testers, basically. Okay, they have different views and the needs for the data uh, and the data because, uh, you know, um, it's, uh, if, if we don't really have a data model, we just cannot present something. We can't really tell the design. So everybody needs some kind of a design on a high level. Okay, it organized data for various users we have discussed already. Now let's go back to the slide where we left. Uh, so we have now understood about what is a data model and what is the need. And we have also seen the definition of a DBMS. DBMS is uh, a software which actually manages a data model, uh, uh, something, a software which is going to manage the database created uh, out of the design of a data model. So here is a brief difference, description of the difference of the file system and the DBMS. It, it, it also uh, would help us understand that why would DBMS, uh, you know, be used when we already have, uh, you know, the data which can be stored in form of a file system. So let's say a company has 500 GB of uh, data on employees, department, products, sales, etc. Okay, all of this data is accessed uh, concurrently by several employees. So what is the need then? Now, when we are trying to query the data, it has to be answered back very quickly. And it can't be really done in a file system. If we have the data getting stored in form of plain files, if we have a data being stored in form of an Excel sheets or an Excel, we can't just access it as quickly as we can using a DBMS. Okay, that's number one. Then we, whatever changes being made by the data by different users, they should be applied consistently. Now, in case of a file system, if we are, uh, one user is applying something and the other user also has applied something. And, you know, as soon as they save, the previous users changes may get lost. So let's say I uh, do some change in the file system, the other user overrides it. Then how, what about the changes that I made? So there is no such kind of uh, uh, logging or something that I, we can do in case of a file system to find out who has done what, right? And in, whereas in case of a DBMS, when we try to interact with DBMS, then every user uh, 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 gets log the record there, there is a record of everybody whosoever is doing the change in the dbms and then what else then there is a, a security that is enforced in case of a dbms in case of a file we do not have any security you we can open the file we can do whatever we uh, like to uh, and save it back if we want to delete the data we want to change the data we can do that in case of a dbms we can grant the permissions we can grant the roles to a particular user okay so let's say i have a user uh, who is who is just a tester who is a part of the testing team now i can grant him a role that he will not be able to edit the data he will not be able to change the data whereas the people who are application programmers or the designers they would have the full access to the data to read, write, copy, whatever stuff they want to do. So these kind of securities can be set in case of DPMS. Okay, some more points about what are the drawbacks of storing in file system. Most of it we have seen, so let's go, uh, go again here quickly. 500 GB of main memory not available to hold data, so it must be stored on secondary storage devices. Okay, even if 500 GB is available with 32-bit addressing, we cannot refer directly to more than 4 GB of data. So obviously with the more that amount of data is there, 
more difficult it will be to handle it using a file system. And then there is a data redundancy and inconsistency issues. Now what happens uh, in case of a file system, we cannot have any kind of uh, constraints enforcement, which means if I have a file, I can put the data in it, but that data can repeat. If I, let's say I'm inserting the data of, uh, of let's say the customers or let's say the employees of an organization, I can put the data of same employee several times inside a file. There is nothing that can stop me. The database does not, uh, the file system does not have any kind of a constraint to do that. Whereas in case of a database system, the DBMS or the any, any particular uh, uh, database system, there we have the concepts of constraints, the primary keys, the unique keys, something to control the data redundancy. And that kind of redundancies uh, are usually managed uh, using the normalization technique in the data model. That will come to, of course, when we go in the lectures, we'll understand completely how we do the normalization. Okay, uh, then we have multiple file formats, duplication of information in different files. So that, uh, of course, we, we have discussed, we, that would be there if we are using a file system. Special program to answer each query user may ask. That's very difficult in case of a file system. Whereas in case of a DBMS, we have a SQL, some kind of a structured language. And then integrity problems, constraint get buried in program code rather than being stated explicitly, hard to add new constraint or change existing ones. So in case of a file system, it's actually not possible to do much of the constraining, okay? So that kind of uh, constraints we try to manage within the program code, which is not really an efficient way. Okay. Now here comes, uh, who are the people who work with databases? So now this is about more of a you know group of people. I'm sure uh, everybody who has joined this session would be from different backgrounds. Some would be working or some may be really just uh, entering this field as a uh, altogether uh, uh, as a fresher or somebody. So um, just to give a background now about when the data modeler works, who are the people who are involved within in a company? So firstly, the database implementers, the designers, they are the modelers themselves, the ones who are uh, the, the, his own team uh, who is working very actively on a uh, database system. And this team itself, uh, if it's a very big organization, the team gets divided into two parts. There is a team who manages only the OLTP part, online transaction processing. That's called as a transactional databases in which uh, we just, in which an application is continuously inserting the data in the database. The transactions are happening. Okay, let's say, let's, Take an example of Amazon, eBay, anywhere where we use an application. Now behind that application, whatever database they would have, that's that would be an OLTP application, OLTP database. Because on daily basis, uh, continuously in the real time, as the customers are ordering the stuff, the data is going inside the database. Transactions are happening continuously. Now once that transactions have happened, the data get transferred to an OLAP. That's called data warehouse. That's from where the analysis or the reports are pulled out by the higher management. If they want to find out, let's say, uh, that how many orders were, uh, you know, placed by a particular customer in so-and-so period. So this kind of historical data is stored over there. So now that kind of a model, that kind of a modeling, the damage, so-called dimensional modeling, if it's a really a big organization, there are a different set of people who do the dimensional modeling as compared to the ones who do the transactional modeling, the relational modeling. Okay, so this uh, team is also divided sometimes. And if it's a medium sized organization, then usually it's the same team. It's a data modelers team who do both the relational as well as 
the dimensional part. Then there are DBAs, database administrators, who actually work on managing the database itself, really the internals of database, let's say, the people who really work on the storage of the database, uh, you know, do the memory allocations, take the backups of the data, uh, you know, make the instances, do the server configurations, everything about, you know, the internal, let's call it like an, in, they, they work on, you have a vehicle who are the people who are really working on the engine part, the people who are really, you know, kind of trying to fix the insides of a vehicle. So those are the people who are called as DBAs, database administrators. And then you have the application programmers. The programmers are the one who actually, uh, you know, build the application. So what is the end purpose of a database? The database that we make, the data modeling that we do, or when we create the database, we finally deliver it to an application programmer. So the delivery is for, it's an input for those uh, programmers who are going to now finally write a piece of code in any of the languages in Java or whatever language they are using, and then they will make an application. Okay. And then the end users, end users are more of the people who use that application. If we are talking within the organization, it is a set of business analysts and the, the testers who are going to finally uh, uh, test those applications. Okay, then we have the database languages now. Uh, uh, how do we interact with the database? So we have Firstly, the DDL, the data definition language, something that is, uh, that helps us to form the structure, form an object, create an object, delete an object, modify an object. Okay, that kind of a, uh, work is done using the DDL, data definition language. Let's say I want to create a table inside a database. I want to create a constraint, drop a constraint. All these will be done using the DDL statements. We will come to it. There will be a separate session about DDL, DML, DCL. Okay, DML, um, so once the objects are created, once the design is ready, the data model is ready, all the objects have been installed in the database. Now we have to start inserting the data in those uh, objects. Or we want to delete the data, we want to retrieve the data, Let, uh, we, uh, you know, we, uh, the data that is stored, we are trying to just combine a certain set of objects and we're trying to retrieve it or we are trying to update. All of that work will be done using the DML, the data manipulation language. And then there is a data control language for all the security uh, uh, aspects where we try to restrict certain users to see or use a particular object, uh, set of objects, whereas other users should not. That kind of a job is done using the DCL. Right, we have already seen the need of data modeling. We don't have to go back here. We can go now further about the types of data models. So uh, now we try to understand something on a very high level about what is the need of data model. Uh, they, these, uh, you know, further if we try to divide a data model, what we find is that in any particular given organization, when the need of data modeling arises, uh, first of all, the data model is made on a very high level. Okay, so usually it starts from a business analyst, the people who are responsible to uh, give the requirements for a particular business, for a particular area, let's say, or, a, or an application that they want to make. Okay, let's take an example of Gmail application. Most of us are, uh, you know, aware about the Gmail. It's a, a very user-friendly uh, email system. Uh, all of us use every day. So uh, if, let's say, I have to make a data model for a Gmail application, then what is usually would be the process in any given organization. First of all, the business analysts are going to gather the requirements that how this application should look like. 
what will be there on the front page this will be my inbox section here all the mails will look uh, will be uh, gathered together on the left panel i would have the inbox the sent items the drafts if i click on sent items then i would see the mails that i have sent if i click on particular folders then i can see the mails that are grouped which i have put in one folder so all of all of this they try to put in something called as brd business requirement document they capture the requirements once the requirements are captured they pass it on to the system analyst the people who are finally going to understand from the system perspective all about the requirements gathered by the business analyst okay so they are the guys who have the knowledge about what language has to be used whether it has to be java whether it has to be c sharp vb whatever stuff and they also are aware about what technology on the dbms side we will be using whether oracle sql or if there is a lot of scope of uh, data warehousing they may go for container data these days it's very popular so once the system analyst understands everything now he comes up with something called as srs system requirement specification in some companies it's also called as dld that's called detailed level diagram okay here now what what is actually srs or dld it's more of how the whole system would work so for let's say that again the given gmail application there will be a class model made that if it's an inbox system inside the inbox these are all the mails then let's make one class i'm sure uh, some of you might be able to relate uh, when i say the class here i'm talking about the some of the uh, object oriented languages like uh, java or something where we make the classes but don't worry if you cannot i'm just trying to relate a few things here so so that, that that's particularly srs is uh, you know the document where we try to give from the system perspective uh, how the whole system will work like so they make the class models they make the you know uh, the object models and uh, you know they, they define really how the piece of interaction how the uh, application would actually interact with the database whether it will be uh, using a middle layer it's a three tier architecture or it's a just simple two tier architecture okay so we'll discuss all of that i'm talking about but uh, here just to give you an idea about what an srs does once the srs is made then it is given to the data modeler now here starts the job of a modeler to finally understand the requirement from the uh, the system analyst or it could be even the application programmers these days uh, the popularly the tech leads are there the team leads who actually take up the charge of passing on the requirements and after the requirements are gathered then the data modeler makes a very high level design okay that's like a, you can call it the first draft design that he makes that's called as the conceptual model the very first model that you see here it says what the system is about he his very first understanding about the system what the whole system is doing okay it does not have any details about uh, uh, the attributes or the relationships or this or that it just have a very high level like you can say for a gmail application he will make a set of four boxes he'll make a, uh, a, a, a one box called as inbox he'll make another box called as mail and they'll make sent items he'll make drafts and then he'll connect using some relationships that's all conceptual model is done then once he understand all the requirements in detail he makes the logical model he converts the conceptual model into a logical model where he tries to put as much detail as possible he puts uh, all kinds of attributes in it he puts uh, you know uh, what are the different data types for the, each of those attributes he puts all the relationships between the entities everything is done in the logical model now till logical model he may not really worry about the database management system 
okay the logical model is completely independent of any particular dbms the conceptual and logical are all just uh, high level models they just dis uh, describe the system as a whole they really do not talk about the technical aspects of any particular uh, model now the third type of model that the physical model that's where the actual uh, you know the system specification starts that what what database system has to be used whether it has to be oracle whether it has to be sql server or some other database so a physical model will always be mapped to a one particular dbms okay uh, this particular uh, dbms is where all the objects that he has made will be finally installed Okay, again, it is converted from a logical model. And once the conversion happens, we try to mo modify that particular model as per the database that we have chosen. If we have chosen, let's say, SQL Server, then there would be a set of data types available in SQL Server. If we are using the Oracle, we would use those particular data types. Okay. And finally, we will be installing that in our uh, DBMS system. A graphical representation of uh, how the whole process is. We have all these schemas. The schemas can be thought of like, uh, you know, the end users or uh, the, the people who are really uh, gathering the requirements. Uh, so they, they first of all, uh, with all of their inputs, the conceptual model is made. And then the logical model, it's converted into a logical model and finally into the physical data model. Again, a small, uh, you know, representation of who does what in a company. Now, conceptual data model, this is a very high level, uh, you know, uh, diagram or a model. What is made is uh, something that will be used by a business analyst or a system analyst. It is, of course, made by a data modeler. But the end users of this model is not really the application programmers. It is more of a understanding type of a model. So whatever is given by the business analyst or system analyst, either they themselves might like to make some draft rough diagram and present it or they may engage a data modeler to make it and discuss it okay once the conceptual model is made then the logical model that is worked upon by da the data architect or the data modeler who gives a proper definition to it to each and every object in it so the end users of uh, logical data modeler uh, model is actually the data modeler themselves and then when it is once it is converted to a physical data model now that is uh, something an ownership of database administrator why database administrator because they are the ones who are really taking care of the database as a whole they are the ones who works on the you know managing and maintaining all the objects taking the backups doing the storage memory allocations and whatnot Okay, so database administrators are the ones who actually work on the physical side. Okay, finally, uh, we have spoken a lot about the data model now, what is the need and what a data model is and why we should make a data model. So here comes the, you know, uh, very first uh, picture of uh, how the data model look like really. So there are uh, generally a few terminologies used and many organizations have in the data modeling world, they have different terminologies. We will use some standard ones that are used all across and understood very well. So firstly, there is something called as an entity and there is a relationship between them. This is how a very simple model would look like if let's say I have to make a model between, uh, let me see if I have. So if I have to make a model between an employee and a department where I say 
in simple terms that multiple employees work in one particular department in an organization then how would I make the model out of it I would make two different entities one as department another as employee and we will just connect those two using a line we'll draw a line between them and on the end where I have multiple instances of an object we'll create a small triangle as you see on the top of an employee entity there is a small triangle what that triangle denotes it's the is the multiple instances attached to one instance of the previous entity so if we have to read out this particular model it will be read out as department has employees working in it and then we can even read it out from the reverse side we can re uh, read out saying an employee works in one particular department if we look at the department side we do not have this triangle there on the top we have it on the on the employee side and because we do not have the triangle it is denoting the single instance of that entity it is denoting the one side so if we read out we will say employee works in one department and on the reverse side if we read out we will say department has multiple employees okay that's uh, that's a very simple representation of uh, an entity and the relationship between them uh, so just to now wanted to give you an example first before we go on the theoretical part so here uh, now it would be easy to understand what is an entity it's a real world thing or interaction between two or more real world things attribute an atomic piece of information that we need to know about entities so if we go back here uh, now inside these entities you see there is an attribute department entity has an attribute called as department ID similarly employee entity has an attribute called as employee ID what are these attributes attributes is a description about that entity something which is going to explain more about that entity if, if we have made an entity called as employee then employee ID would be one of the attribute which is uh, here a primary key we'll discuss what is a primary key and unique keys uh, what else can be there we can have the name of the employee store in this entity we can have the contact address we can have contact number we can have email ID and everything related to employee all of those will become part of the attributes of an entity okay and then we have the relationship which say which defines how entities depend on each other in terms of why the entities depend on each other and what that relationship is so we define the cardinality of really will so again not to get too much uh, deep into the terminology because as we go in the sessions we'll discuss each and everything in detail what is a cardinality what is optionality and everything but here it's, it's just a simple uh, uh, you know example of uh, the entity and the relationship between them this line that you see between the department and the employee this line is called as a relationship okay that's in the logical terms when the same thing gets converted into into the physical side on the physical side it will be called as a foreign key constraint there will be an altogether a different object made in the database all right we'll discuss that in the future sessions all right so uh, again it's just repeating the same thing given that employee is an entity department is an entity every employee is identified by a unique employee number a department is identified by a unique department number and then there are multiple employees working in one department okay this was this can be thought of more as a as a like a solution that has been uh, made out out of us one line requirement the one line requirement that was stated was uh, please make a uh, ER diagram or a data model for a small company which has a set of departments and employees working in each of those departments multiple employees working in each of those departments so just one piece uh, one uh, single line of requirement uh, if we had to make a data model that's how it will look like all right I'm sure it is much more uh, easier to understand when we really take the examples 
Okay, so this is going to be one of the major part of this whole training. Um, uh, there will be a lot of examples and case studies. I will not really be teaching you much of the theoretical concepts. I would be, of course, but it would not be really for a longer time. Let's say it would be, it would last in, let's say, another couple of days. And after that, we will directly jump on to the real time projects, the uh, data modeling projects, which I have, you know, been uh, gathering all through my experience in previous companies. So we'll work on all those. Uh, uh, real time projects and so uh, one, once we are really working in this project uh, in the practical uh, projects that's when the learning is uh, you know it becomes very fast and effective it becomes much more efficient all right so in the attributes okay changing from one tool to other is not more than a few hours job what is more important is to learn and get the skill set of data modeling. The one who is a data modeler, he, when he is given a piece of a set of a requirement, he should be able to translate that in form of a data model, even on a piece of pen and paper. That in form of a tool, because tool, all that it does is it facilitates us. It makes our job easy to understand a diagram. Every tool has all that same features of making the boxes, the relationships between them, defining the attributes, converting from one model to the other, finally generating the SQL scripts and whatnot. So we are going to cover these two tools here in the training, C. A. Erwin as well as SAP Power Designer, so that you guys can just, uh, uh, you know, uh, go with whatever is the requirement in your projects or wherever you want to, let's say, apply if you are shifting of into the another field. Uh, if you have any special requirement for any other tool, let's say your company wants are you is using ES Studio or Oracle Design or anything which uh, something uh, new is there, you can let me know and I will try my best to help you out there as well. The attribute of employee's employee ID, unique identifier, primary key of employee identity is shown with a hash symbol that you see here, the department ID. It's showing it's shown with a hash same with the employee ID. Uh, these are the primary keys of these two entities. We'll discuss more about what is a primary key unique key. Uh, so think of entities as tables. Think of attributes as columns on the table and think of instances as rows on the table. So now why is this kind of statement I've tried to include here because many of us are already, uh, you know, sometimes working in a database side. Some of you might be like a PL SQL developer or might have some idea around the database. Uh, so it's easier to relate that entity is nothing but if we convert it in a database terms, it will be called as a table and the relationship will be called as a constraint, the foreign key constraints. Anything else you